All right, so I'm going to get started with my library assignment demo. I'm here on the P5.js libraries page, and I want to look for p5.play. Now, of course, you can choose any of these user contributed libraries uh, for your assignment for this week, but this one we'll be doing some work with in later assignments. So to me, it makes sense to start downloading it and playing with it right now. So clicking that link takes us to the GitHub page. Uh, you can see this is much more well-designed than some of the other GitHub pages that you'll see for other user contributed libraries. I'm gonna go ahead and download this library. So I can see here, we're all set. Let's go ahead and open it up. I've got my uncompressed folder here, bunch of info, examples, and then the library files themselves. So let's jump over to our web editor. Got a brand new blank sketch here. Do our library setup. So I'll get into my sketch files, make a libraries folder. And we'll upload that library file. Then on into index.html, let's make sure that we're linking. So I'll just copy and paste this script tag. And I'll first link to my libraries folder and a slash and then p5.play.js. So that's going to link in our p5 play library. Okay, I saved it. Let's go into sketch.js. And now we can actually test and make sure the library is set up correctly. So back to the p5 play web page. A really nice link here for getting started. So this covers downloading and installing, which are the steps that we just made and linking in the index.html file. So we're down here to step four, and this gives us some demo code that we can copy into our sketch and test to make sure things are set up correctly. So I'm just gonna highlight this, copy, jump back to my editor, and I'm just replacing everything that's in the default sketch.js. So let's go ahead and play. There we go. I've got a square on the screen, so this tells me uh, a little bit of info, uh, particularly that uh, the library is installed and it's actually starting to do things that we want. So let's take a look at this code. Um, so we've got this create sprite function uh, here in setup, and then we've got draw sprites. So a sprite is kind of one of the basic building blocks of this P5 play library. Uh, it behaves a little bit like an array with some extra properties. So we can do things like assign images, uh, make interactions between sprites. So kind of a way to uh, take an image or a screen drawing from a vector shape that we'd make with one of our function calls in P5 and give it some extra behaviors, some extra modifications. So rather than spending lots of time drawing shapes or drawing my own artwork, uh, I'm going to go on to opengameart.org, and this is a great place for royalty-free public domain uh, artwork that we can bring into a video game. So I'm going to pick, let's see what we got here. I'm going to look at this uh, dungeon crawler 32 by 32 tiles. And of course, there's tons of stuff on here uh, that we can search through, um, so I'm not going to spend too much time, but this looks great to me. So let's go ahead and download this. And we have extracted it. So let's look and see what we've got. Lots of different things. Maybe we want a monster. So I can see these are very cute. Ooh, I kind of like this um, flaming salamander. Uh, so let's make a sprite out of that image. So to get that set up, let's uh, go back to our sketch. Let's create ourselves an images folder. And we'll upload into that. Okay. 
All right, so let's go back to sketch.js. Now, um, our goal here is to get that image attached to the sprite that we see on screen. So right now, we're just seeing a default rectangle that's filled with a color. So let's first make a variable that's going to hold our image. Uh, and in terms of what I'm making here, you know, I'm imagining this sprite uh, that we've already got laid out on screen. Um, that's going to be sort of like a, a goal that we'll need to reach uh, where the user has to navigate, I don't know, maybe some sort of a maze or something, uh, and we'll need to reach that goal with whatever we're going to set up for our player. Um, and so here I'm imagining some sort of interaction uh, around what's going on with this sprite, and then maybe we'll add a few other sprites. Uh, so I'm imagining that Maybe we'll have a player sprite and some obstacle sprites, and we'll need to reach uh, this sprite that's on screen. So I'm thinking of that as sort of like the goal sprite. Um, so I'm going to start with my variable names here with goal. So we'll make one for goal image, uh, and we'll make one for goal object. So since we're dealing with uh, an image, uh, we'll need to make a preload function. And so this runs before setup. Uh, and it's helpful when dealing with pixel-based images just to make sure everything is there uh, before the sketch actually starts to run. Uh, so here I'll use that goal image variable and then the load image function. And then link first to my images folder and a slash and then I'm just going to copy in the file name. And end quotes, wrap up my function. That's looking good. Uh, so I've got that image loaded into my goal image variable, uh, but I have not attached it to this sprite. So let's do a little bit of work on this uh, create sprite function. Um, and before I do that, I'm gonna jump back to the P5 play page here and let's go into the reference and this is where we'll really start sort of digging in and figuring out how things work here. Um, so I want to look at this uh, sprite section here. Um, and on the left in this column are sort of the main objects uh, that we would be dealing with when we're working with this library. So let's click on sprite. You can see here this is the main building block of P5 Play. It can store images or animations with properties like position and visibility. Uh, it can collide with other things on screen, uh, detecting overlaps or mouse interactions. Um, so to create a sprite, use create sprite. And I can see here uh, I'm using that function uh, already in my example code. So let's click on this uh, create sprite link. And what I'm looking for here is the uh, documentation of that method. So here we have create sprite. That's taking in an X, a Y, a width, and a height, and it's returning an object. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and what I want to do is give myself a, a sort of a reference point to store the object that I'm getting when I call that create sprite function. And that's what I'm planning to do with this uh, goal object variable. Um, so on this line here, I'm going to copy that in and say, goal object equals create sprite. So that's still uh, doing the same functionality as just calling the create sprite function on its own. The difference here is that I'm taking the sprite object that's being returned by this function and I'm saving it in a variable. That way, later on in the code, I can reference that variable and do things like attach my image to it. Um, so to figure out how to do that, I'm gonna jump back to the reference here uh, so this is on the main uh, P5 play section, so we're here. And so this is showing me sort of like the main set of methods that I'd have access to in this library. Let's jump back to Sprite. And I can see here um, I have an add image method. So let's click that and I can see uh, that is a method that is expecting a label and an image. So that adds an image to the Sprite which is considered to be a one frame animation. So that's one cool thing about this library is we do have the option of making animated sprites, uh, which can make characters or objects on the screen look like they're moving. So this is saying the image should be preloaded in the preload function. We've already done that. And if we're doing an animation, we need an identifying label. 
uh, the image is stored in the sprite but not necessarily displayed until until sprite change animation label is called. So uh, in this case, I just want one image for this sprite. I'm not going to be switching between different uh, sets of images or sets of animations. So I'm going to use this syntax here where we say sprite dot add image and then just the variable that's holding the image. So I've already got my sprite. It's stored in that goal object. So I can call it up again and perform methods on it. So I can say goal object dot add image. And since I've already stored my image in that goal image variable, plug that right in and we should get now our amazing flaming salamander. And maybe I want that to be a little bit bigger. Ah, okay. So, uh, so one characteristic of the way that this library is set up, it looks like the image does not scale to the bounds of the sprite. Um, so if I wanted that to be larger, I would have to go back and actually resize the image. So for now, um, I'm just gonna leave this as is, and maybe that's something I could tackle later uh, in Photoshop or whatever image editor I'd like to use. So I've got my uh, goal object here. And so let's go ahead and do a similar setup for uh, whatever the character of the player is going to be. And I'm just doing these uh, declarations on two separate lines for my own sort of uh, mental organization. You could do it all on one uh, and it would be the same exact thing. So let's find an image that's gonna go along with our player. Ooh, giant orange brain. Okay, that's gonna be our player character. So let's upload that into our images folder. Okay, and we're gonna do the same exact operation as uh, loading in our goal image that will attach to the goal sprite. Uh, here, just gonna copy that line Make sure I'm spelling my variables correctly. And I'm getting an error for some reason. Oops. Boy, you really gotta be careful about your spelling, don't you? Okay, so then let's make uh, a player sprite object. So player obj equals create sprite. And then we'll say player obj dot add image player image. <laughs> Great. Okay, that's looking awesome. Um, and so as we're going through here, sort of building off of the example code, um, I'm making sure to jump back and forth and making sure that I understand what each of these uh, method calls and each of these object setups from the library are supposed to be doing. So for example, this draw sprites uh, function call. Let's see if we can find that. And that should be under the main P5 play. Here we go, draw. So we have an option of draw sprite or draw sprites. So we can specify a single uh, sprite to draw. We can specify a group of sprites. If no group parameter is specified, all sprites in the sketch are drawn. So that's some nice functionality. And I can see here, this is making reference to a sprite property of depth, uh, which determines the drawing order. So that would be, you know, which sprites are in the foreground, which sprites are in the background. So, you know, you kind of have to play detective here uh, when you're figuring out how to use a library. You have to go back to the reference, you have to read through, you have to sort of remember these clues, right? So I'm sort of making a mental note of this, that uh, sprites have a property called depth and that determines the drawing order. And maybe that'll come into play later on. So I've got a pretty good setup here. Um, at this point, I'm gonna take a break. 
in the next video, I'm going to take a crack at getting the giant orange brain to move around with some sort of user input. Maybe it's following the mouse. Uh, maybe it's uh, swiping with a finger touch or something like that.